As we mark CARICOM Africa Day 2023, this initiative called Musings features thought leaders from a range of backgrounds as they reflect on the aspects of the CARICOM Africa relationship over time and articulate their vision for its future development. From my own perspective, the recognition of CARICOM Africa Day annually is an ideal occasion on which to reflect on the relationship between our two regions, to reimagine the possibilities and to take action that will engender the kind of transformation that our people want and need. So it's about imagination, action, and transformation. It goes without saying that those who initiated the exploitative economic activity of the transatlantic slave trade could not have planned for or envisaged the evolution of a Caribbean civilization. Nor could they have foreseen that people would have reached out across the waters to establish new bonds and rekindle familial ties, each in his own way. And I'm thinking here of Marcus Garvey, Sir Arthur Lewis, Walter Rodney, Bob Marley, and others who stirred things up and in so doing helped stimulate ideas and build bridges. From 2019, we have seen significant impetus at the highest political and institutional levels in CARICOM Africa relations, manifested in the establishment of a joint diplomatic office in Nairobi, Kenya, the convening of the CARICOM Africa Summit of Heads of State and Government, the Afro-Caribbean Trade and Investment Forum, the conclusion of agreements with the African Export-Import Bank, and collaboration in the COVID-19 response when CARICOM countries were given access to the African Medical Supplies Platform on the same terms as its African yeah. country members. More recently, the governments of Kenya and Rwanda signaled their support of CARICOM efforts towards a solution for Haiti and committed to continued deepening of the alliance that exists between the two regions. By their actions, our leaders are demonstrating vision, boldness, and a determination to confront concretely and collectively such common challenges as climate change, high indebtedness, high unemployment, limited access to concessionary financing, healthcare, food security, and citizen security. And meanwhile, Rema, Ira Star, Yemi Alade, Buju Banton, and Marshall Montano are drawing crowds to music festivals. Priests and nuns from the continent are serving here in the Caribbean. African doctors have established medical practices and teach at medical schools. Our entrepreneurs, intellectuals, academics, researchers, and workers are traveling between our regions. They're building the deep and enduring people-to-people -people bonds that no government can contrive. So taking these into account, I cannot help but consider whether we are witnessing a new wave of Pan-Africanism, one that is devoid of grand pronouncements and writings, but is imbued, imbued with a kind of messaging that engenders an appreciation of our common history and significantly a sense that we share a common destiny. I believe that it is really at this level that the future of CARICOM Africa relations has its springboard. Governments must continue to create the political and institutional environment within which the CARICOM Africa relationship can grow. But it is really the citizens who will be the force behind that growth and who ultimately will determine its trajectory and its sustainability.